Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. La 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 Please tell me you guys are recording. <laughs> wasn't. Dang it. Oh, I was. We'll just redo it. Well, no, okay. we'll just Ready? do. We'll just do your voice. <laughs> <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> la 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 la. Honestly, la. it can't be good. It's great. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Potted Together podcast. My name is Becca, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Adam and Nicole. Hello. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Show yourselves. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Welcome, everybody. Today, we... Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Today, we are doing an episode where we talk about downsizing our collections, what that looks like. Perhaps how to do it, how to let go of plants when it's time, things like that. So, but before we do that, of course, we're going to catch up because some of us went on a fun little trip <laughs> and then the other two of us Didn't. rotted in our homes. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. I saw you went to Branson, the the Midwest. Oh, that's... Yeah. Midwest Vegas. Yes. Come and go. <laughs> also, I'm living for these nails. Like so hard. Oh, you like them? Yeah, yeah very I pretty. really do. We should have done our nails when you were here. Yeah, yeah. Like, because now they're non-existent. Here, we should have done little nail art. I've been wanting to do somebody else's nails, but like obviously, Daniel's not going to let me do that. Boo. So. <laughs> Mr. Masculine. <laughs> so, but um, anyway, tell me, tell me what's new. We were already kind of catching up as we do prior to recording and Nicole stole my rain that I was supposed to get and yeah so other than that uh <laughs> wants to go I'm just babbling because you guys aren't talking so somebody it please. rained it rained here this morning like it's still kind of drizzling which is nice to see Ooh, but how dreamy yeah, does it yeah. smell good it does yeah it's like the desert has it <laughs> the desert has that nice rain smell yeah. It does. Thank you, creosote I love that bushes. Smell. <laughs> I know. I love that smell. It's the best thing. You know, creosote is what railroad ties are made of. So if you ever get close to railroad tracks, just like stick your nose on one of those wooden railroad ties and you'll. Be- You're kidding. No. That's interesting. Yeah. All railroad ties in the history of railroad ties are made out of creosote bushes? I think there's something with creosote and railroad ties. <gasps> yeah. Sorry, I was like, are you sure <laughs> <laughs> of absolute fact? I mean, Snapple some railroad ties no are hesitation. cement, but the wooden ones. Yeah. But yeah. That's interesting. Catch yeah. up. I went to Disney and Universal Studios. Whatever. Fun. Anyway, Ooh. moving on to me. So what I did... <laughs> 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 you got a wand. Oh you did the whole gosh. Harry Potter thing. Like, I am so jealous. <laughs> I honestly didn't even see a quarter of the Harry Potter stuff just because, like, we had one day at Universal. So it was like we were trying to get everything in both parks. So, yeah. and honestly, I could have spent a whole day just in the Harry Potter worlds. And so. I have to go back. I have to do that. Like, I have to spend my time in Harry Potter because it was, it's just so damn magical. Like, literally and <laughs> figuratively. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I Did bought... Oh, well, what? Sorry. I was just going to say, when you were in, like, Diagon Alley. Diagon Alley. <laughs> I think he said Diagon Alley. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Sorry. When you were in Diagon Alley, 
did it feel like you're in the movie? It looks so real. Yeah, it's insane. Like, it's legitimately in, like, I was just, like, blown away. Because to get into Diagon Alley, which is the whole new part of the parks that I had never been to, you're, like, walking in Universal, and there's, like, this brick wall that just has a doorway, and you kind of walk through that. And then you see another brick wall that you have to turn, and it's kind of, like, crumbling on the side. And so you have to weave around these brick walls, and then you just see this giant dragon I was going to say, fire. so that's, like, the, that's the dragon on top of the building. That's what you guys are talking yeah. about? Yeah. Oh, cool. my gosh. It was so cool. That, that looked really cool. Yeah. Wow. But oh. Disney was even, well, I don't want to say even more fun, because there are two different parks, because Universal's got more thrill rides, and Disney's just like an experience, you know? And you definitely could mm-hmm. tell that Universal was more focused on the rides than they were the experience because some of those workers were a-holes. I mean, granted, I know that you're probably not having a fun time at a job where you just, like, have to deal with people on vacation all the time because people on vacation, to me, are selfish. Like, they're like, it's my vacation. (laughs) Like, I don't care that the park closed or that your store's closed. Like, I want to get in and buy this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But they, Disney's just a whole different, you know, they care about the experience and they want it to be good. Universal was like, shut up and move. We need to get to the next people. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. At, on some level, it's not as if they didn't know that it would be like that, right? Yeah. You know? So it's kind of like, well, you work here. We're at a major tourist destination. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know. I mean, I would probably chalk it up to the fact that some people are just, they've been out of work for a year, pretty much. Like, Disney was closed for, like, a year, right? And now they're back, and now shit's kind (laughs) of hitting the fan again, for lack of better words. Yeah. So, maybe that, maybe you were kind of there at that time, Adam, you know? Yeah, but I ran into somebody who was a friend of the pod who said hi to me, so... No way! Her name is Katie. She sent you, Nicole, an al- or somebody in Alocasia Stingray, she told me. She sent it to Becca. Me. Okay. Oh, yeah. cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes, she messaged me and was like, oh my gosh, I saw Adam, and I totally fangirled, and I told him I sent you a Stingray, and I was like, oh my god, what the heck, that's so crazy. That's It was nuts. wild. Because, okay, so I had my big camera because I was vlogging the whole thing, which was hectic in and of itself. But the camera is quite large. You, you both have seen it. And it's, it's like people kept staring at me because they're like, oh, this might be a person that I know, even though they have no idea who I am. And so I, we mm-hmm. were, like, trucking through the Pirates of the Car- Caribbean line. And I see this this lady just, like, with this huge smile just staring at me. And I'm like, okay, well, she's clearly, like, thinks I'm somebody that I'm not. Like, she probably is like, oh, I'm, I saw a Disney <laughs> vlogger. And then she goes, are you not, dude? And I, like, oh. I literally just, like, stopped and was like, yes. <laughs> and it was so sweet to meet her. And she, you know, we had one off day. It was Wednesday. Uh, and she was like, if you, if you need some, like, if you want someone to host you guys, like, let me know, like, you're welcome at my place or like, I'll take you around, which was Mm -hmm. so incredibly kind. But on the off day, like I was so exhausted that I I didn't want to like leave the condo. I was just like, I need to sleep for this entire day. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was, it was really cool running into her and she had a beautiful planty shirt on and I was like, oh, you're just the best. (laughs) Oh, hi, Katie. That's amazing. Fun. Yeah. Amazing. Hi, Katie. But yeah, <laughs> it was uh, the plants at Disney. Just, whoa. I'm excited to see yes. these vlogs. No oh pressure. Oh, my gosh. But I'm excited about it. I'm anxious about the vlogs just because, I mean, I'm still going to do them, but it was just rush, rush, rush. Like, literally, we would go on a ride. We would rush to a ride, and then as soon as we got off it, we would rush to the next one. And so, Mm -hmm. like, the whole storytelling part of, like, the vlog, I feel like, is going to be lost. Because it's, like, I didn't even, like, catch up after a ride. Steve and I didn't talk about it. Not all... Some of the time we did, but not all the time. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be a burden to the other people we were going with, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, whew. It would just be nice to live near... I mean, I guess we kind of live near Disney, Disneyland, Mm -hmm. where we could go more often and just, like, you know not have to try to hit every single thing 
yeah in the day yeah. where you could just be like okay today we're just gonna like do these few rides and then go find some cool food places to eat right but yeah it was really fun exhausting but fun mm-hmm. yeah i get Tripping. that wow i mean it Tripping takes a lot well, <laughs> oh yeah what was your favorite park you went to Ooh, that's such a tough one I feel like I want to say Epcot just because I think the World Showcase is really amazing, but we didn't even get to, like, touch half of the World Showcase. So the mm-hmm. so I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Animal Kingdom, maybe. And again, Animal yeah. Kingdom had shortened hours, so, like, we didn't even get to see it at night. But honestly, it was just beautiful. It doesn't have the rides. It has a couple of the Avatar rides that were really fun, but... Mm-hmm. Safari- Did you do like the Avatar ride where you like get on the simulation and it like breathes? Yes. Oh my gosh, it's so weird, right? Oh my gosh, yeah, it was wild. Like I, it feels so real. Yeah, I was screaming. Like there were parts where I dodged because like something flies in front of the screen, like it's gonna hit you, but clearly, it's <laughs> not real. But yeah. I was like dodging. It was so fun. <laughs> And I think Yeah, that was really cool. And I think Steve is kind of getting into the Disney experience now because he's like he's been singing the theme song to the Enchanted Tiki Room like literally every day. <laughs> which is like the one of the original animatronics at Disney, which it was a really cool it's a really awesome like but it's just a sit down and you see birds like singing and stuff for 15 minutes. Um mm-hmm. But then we went and visited the Polynesian Resort, which is like a Hawaiian type resort, and he fell in love with that. So he's like, "Oh, we need to stay here." And I was like, "Yes, we do." <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh. And then he bought some like candles that smell like some of the Disney rides because you know Disney pumps their own scents into like some oh, of I the rides. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, well, that makes sense. Why some of them smell a certain way. Yeah. So, like, Pirates of the Caribbean have like has, like, a certain scent. And um, there's some other ones. Soren, which was in Epcot, I believe, mm-hmm. has some scents. Yeah. So, yeah. He's going full on Disney nerd. Fun. Wow. You guys should... Disneyland is so fun. You should definitely go to Disneyland. It's so much smaller. Yeah. And it's just way more approachable i liked disneyland more personally although disney world is incredible but like yeah i'm really excited to go to disneyland i think my friend chrissy wants to go in february and i told i kind of (laughs) promised her because we were going to go last february before like when everything was just Mm -hmm. like coming down um and i kind of promised her that i wouldn't go to disneyland for the first time with anyone but her so i was like we're we're planning on February but I'm really excited because it just you're right it feels more small like you can literally walk from one park to the next mm-hmm. yep it'd probably be easier yeah. to vlog there like you said you know because it's less overwhelming yeah get a little park hopper ticket yeah <laughs> but it's so funny like when you see characters like I'm a grown I'm a grown man but like I turn into like a child when I was like Tinkerbell <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was fun though. Cool. Oh, I love it. So yeah, what about Branson? Let's hear about. Yeah. Let's hear about Branson Mo. Okay, one second. I'm repositioning here because I'm scared that my audio is bad. It's probably fine, but I'm just <coughs> nervous. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I've been to Branson a few times because that senior citizen travel group that we I used to help <laughs> that we would go there. So I've, I've never been even to like heard yeah. of it. a lot of shows in Branson. I wasn't bad, but it's yeah. like it's definitely like catered to like a more mature crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Is the town is Christian Vegas, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So there's like a lot of shows. They're all very family friendly. There was a show playing about like Jesus and I was talking to my friend and she's like, oh yeah, like a couple of months ago they had one about like Samson. So it's like not only Bible, but like niche Bible. Like, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) So anyway, but yeah, it was, it was interesting. Like I think there's only like 10,000 people that live in the city or in the town, but there's just so much to do and so much tourism. 
So I was visiting my friend who's living there and working there right now, like for the summer with this like group program thing. And um, yeah, I wasn't able to see her all summer because I was taking care of Daniel. And then um, I went up and I stayed in a little cabin inside of a campsite because I couldn't stay with her because she was like living with the people that she's working with. Mm-hmm. So um Anyway, it was just really cute, like this like tiny little cabin on a campsite, and it was great. Like I got, I had cinnamon rolls, I had Krispy Kreme. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did vlog it. It'll it'll probably be up by the time this podcast goes up, like for sure. So you can head over to my second channel if you want to watch it. And also, Adam, plug your channel. Plug your second channel. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I've been I've been keeping up with the travels on Instagram at waypoint underscore explorers. And you can't, mm-hmm. I do have the YouTube channel up, but you can't search it because we don't have a video. But as soon as we get a video, I think okay. it'll be searchable because I got yes. the logo okay, and all cool. that done. So Yay. Yay. Yeah. That's so I'm glad exciting. for you. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what I did last week. I did that for like three days. And it was just so nice to be there and like read and listen to my book. Oh my God, you guys, I am like so deep in like fairy, like <laughs> romance right now. It is insane. Ooh. Like, So you would have been excited about Tinkerbell too. Tink. <laughs> hey, Tink. These, I would have seen Tink and been like, oh girl, what'd it do? What can you, what those wings do? No, um... <laughs> <laughs> um no okay it's like fairy but like spelled f-a-e-r-i-e like that kind of fairy like oh. renaissance fair mm. fairy like cosplay you know um so like i feel a little nerdy reading a book from this category because like i just am a yach and just always assume that people who read these books were weird but like i get it yeah. like, i'm literally like <laughs> so invested and I'm like oh my god like and it's like a romance so there are some some smexy scenes so every time one of those happens and I'm like oh my god they have these powers and they could like use them on each other oh god it's just crazy (laughs) anyway uh Okay, okay, okay. Wait, okay. have you? I'm sorry. Did you ever I'm read Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> oh hell yeah, I did. Okay, is <laughs> it akin? Like not akin is it, like it's the same. Like I don't know. It's not as sexy as Fifty Shades. Like okay. Fifty Shades is like full on like BDSM yeah. book porn. Yeah. Um. Well, okay, it's not even that. I wouldn't even put it in that category. But yeah, it's like. Fifty Shades is, like, sexier, quote-unquote, than this book I'm reading. But there are several scenes in the book that I'm reading that I'm, like, screaming reading it or listening to it. Like, it's happening. I'm, like, cutting out a sewing pattern. Like, I'm, like, making clothes, and it's, like, and then he stroked his finger down my... <laughs> and I'm, like... <laughs> and you cut the arm off of your dress. I know. I'm, like, oh, my God, so crazy like what the (laughs) anyway it's so much more than that though it that just happens to be a part of the story but there's like a lot of other things that happen but okay for everybody who might be wondering because i'm really selling it here (laughs) i'm reading the a court of thorns and roses series okay so it's really good and it's being put into a show i was just gonna say like screamed uh, do you ever like sometimes when i read books and i was like i really hope they make a movie out of this or a show yes so that's good yeah it's gonna be a show on hulu and it's being made by oh god listen to this (laughs) it's being made by the same people by the same producer as the Outlander producer, oh. which is my favorite, like my other favorite romance. I still haven't fiction. seen that. I need to get on that train. Oh my gosh, the you book would was love so good. It. Yeah. Okay. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, not to be dramatic, but it's amazing. But Jamie. Anyway, so it's. I know it's being. Oh God, Jamie. <laughs> okay, but I just like love love <laughs> fictional like 
male protagonists, especially when it's written by a woman. <laughs> like, it's just so good. Oh, oh gosh. Okay, anyway, I don't want to <laughs> give too much away. But it's being turned into a show on Hulu, and it was announced in March that they're doing it, so it'll probably be a couple of years. But I am excited to see them turn it into a show because... I'm just visualizing everything and I've looked at like fan art and it's just different like I just would love to see it done but I hope that it's good but since it's being done by the same people as Outlander I feel like it will be good but okay yeah. well anyway that sounds very exciting it sounded like a great trip yeah <laughs> yeah it was a really fun okay back to the trip yeah it was really fun just to like <laughs> be by myself like I really don't mind being by myself I don't mind traveling by myself and it's just nice to do it for like a couple days at a time just to random places because like I realize that I'm very very chill and I on vacations I'm definitely the person who's like oh let's just like hang out on the beach like just sit and like not do anything Mm -hmm. and Daniel is very like oh let's go do all these things so we balance each other out pretty well in that because like we get like both but if it was if it's just me traveling by myself like I am straight chilling the whole time like just trying to get good food and like reading on the beach is like all I ever want to do on vacation so yeah 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 I just love it so anyway that was the most exciting thing that's happened to me and my garden is getting so big I harvested some zucchini I was gonna ask you if you've if you've picked anything and eaten yeah the fruits of your labor yeah, I have had a uh, zucchini and it was it was good. I left it out there for too long, though, so it was kind of watery, but I just need to pick them faster. But they just grew so fast. Mm-hmm. It was like overnight. It like tripled in size. I was like, what? That's what she said. But, um, <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. That makes me happy because I feel like when we were there, you were just like you you put all of the work into building this amazing structure but you were just like oh these yeah. plants like are not doing well and i'm mad at myself i think i started too late and i'm glad that that, yeah. that wasn't the case mm-hmm. and that i growing. told you i said give it some time i told you didn't i yeah you did yeah yeah i do remember i was very like yeah anyway like the the fence looks great huh but the plants i don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to see. But yeah, so I'm I am getting some harvest with the zucchini. Um some tomatoes are growing. I think that there's some cucumbers growing. But yeah, I did plant things late, so like I should have had like several harvests by now and I haven't I've barely had one. So who knows, but like fall crops I'll be better prepared and mm-hmm. everything else. So Yeah. But yeah, that's that's basically what's going on with me. So Nicole. Yeah. Okay. So my week has been fine. Actually, this, I just realized this is more like of a two week update because we didn't record last week. So I was like Mm -hmm. digging in my brain. I was like, wow, is my life really that boring? But anyway, I've been working a lot. So yes, it is pretty boring. But something that I'm battling are Japanese fucking beetles. <sighs> Bleep that out if you must, Adam. But they're <sighs> just everywhere. Like it started on my rose bushes, and now we have they this. They love the roses. They really do. Like, just like all the leaves are just complete skeletons. It's pretty bad. But anyway, I've been doing some research on these guys, and I bought Bonide Eight, and then I also bought Bonide Japanese Beetle spray which i'm just gonna chalk up to probably being the same thing as bonite eight probably (laughs) but i've (laughs) i've been treating them like early in the morning and late at night because i guess that's when they're kind of paralyzed i guess for lack of better words because in the middle of the day if you find them on there and you go to shake them off they'll like fly away but in the morning if you tap them off they'll just like fall to the ground because they're like i don't know nectar drunk or something i don't know but Mm. I've been trying to spray them, but we've been getting so much rain that I don't think that it's working. I think it's just like washing off the bushes. So yeah. mm. I think I'm just going to take like a big bucket of soapy water and just go around and knock them in there and just kill them off that way. Because apparently for every female you kill, you kill like 40 babies because they can lay like a, yeah, it's gross, but they kill everything. Like not just roses. We have a hardy, uh, cold hardy hibiscus, which I just found out it's a beautiful, beautiful hibiscus bush, beautiful, Mm -hmm. like huge red, 
leaves or um, flowers that are finally blooming. And I'm like, okay, thank God. Like there's no rose bushes near that. So it should be fine. And then we woke up this morning and there's beetles on it. And I'm like, just (laughs) no. Yeah. So that's that's what my mornings and my evenings have been consisting of lately is trying to kill Japanese beetles like they're ruthless yeah, and I have some house plants outside so I'm like oh, please don't make your way to that but I think that they're more so driven to like floral plants yeah I think so too right yeah because they're not really on like our shrubs or our hostas it's mainly like stuff that flowers so I don't know it's- it's surprising to me that this is the first time you've dealt with them living in the Midwest, because mm-hmm. like I feel like I just remember them all the time growing up. But yeah, I know, I know you said that, and quite a few people in like one of my uh, garden videos on YouTube told me they're like, "Wow, I'm surprised that you haven't seen Japanese beetles and like my Instagram stories," because this is really all I've been talking about lately. And <laughs> <laughs> I, like I told my mom, because my mom's had a house in the Midwest for all my life. You know, she just recently came back from Arizona, but they were only there for like three years. So I was like, yeah. "You've never seen Japanese beetles?" She's like, "I have never had them, like ever." <laughs> I was like, "This is crazy," but yeah, that is. We'll we'll get through it. They, we'll kill them yeah, all. they hmm. truly do decimate plants and they work a lot like stink bugs where when they find a spot they like emit a pheromone to mm-hmm. let everyone else know like hey we found a good plant come over here so that's why you always see them in like hordes of like right. beetles Ew. and they're like constantly just like on top of each other full on orgy like tons <laughs> of beetles just getting it down like that's what they do they like eat and then they like do the dirty that's all they do is just eat and like have sex and i'm just like i'm walking over to them while they're doing it and i'm like die honestly though like (laughs) sounds what a great life vacation (laughs) (laughs) my vacation (laughs) maybe my hibiscus plant is disney for these the funniest thing here is that nicole probably has like I don't want to say the dirtiest mouth, but you you cuss more than any of us. But watching you like tiptoe around just saying the word sex is really funny to me. I'm a little prude. <laughs> She'll drop the f bomb anytime, but then she's like, "Well, they're basically just all on top of each other, do doing it. You know, doing the dirty, <laughs> reproducing or something um, like that. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I hope I hope that, that, is that they. Funny get taken care of soon i know i'm over next it. year just like start pre-spraying everything before they like come out yeah and apparently they they came here in like the early 1900s from japan and they were shipped here on like a specific plant from japan they didn't check the soil well enough and they got in and that's how they got in yeah, and they. This is start why off... we have phytosanitary certificates now, people. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they start off as grubs, which it's funny because we use grub X in the grass. Like my mom's a huge grub X gal, and but we didn't do it like around the plants because you just use grub X in the grass. But I don't know. I what I've heard was to use grub X around your shrubbery, and it should help like you know at the start of the season so yeah but yeah that's my update what about the what about the clover Mm. mite situation is that still a thing no it's better and actually i emailed our exterminator because we had some clover mites i think i talked about this on the podcast right when we first moved in like a little over a month ago and we had the basement and the whole house pretty much exterminated and they've like we don't see any alive anymore which is great because it's rare that Mm. you like fully exterminate clover mites because they're just like mad like the population's so big but we don't see any more of them but i emailed my exterminator and i was like hey you know just wanted to stay on top of this like i don't want to see them again so when can you come out and spray again and he said three months Mm -hmm. and that's when i asked him about the i asked him about the um japanese beetles and he told me about like grub x in the spring and all that but Mm -hmm. yeah no that's been taken care of so now like when we clean you know how you move stuff away from your baseboards there's just like all these dead clover mites and like all these other dead insects all over the place and i was like well at least it's working you know like i'll vacuum up dead bugs as long as they're not alive you know yeah 
Yeah. You know what? I feel like your house, Nicole, like, because a lot of people's houses are, like, clean. Mm -hmm. But, like, your house is probably pristine. Because, like, you just said you move things from the baseboards to clean. And I'm like, and you're like, you know how you do that? And I'm like, "Uh." (laughs) (laughs) just vacuum around it. I never move things. I know. (laughs) I've got dust bunnies in the corners of my house. And I'm like, all right, well, she's I cleaned. I feel like Adam's like shaking his head yes, but I don't I don't know. Like I just I don't know. I don't feel like it's pristine. She at took all. me to like see her old house because they had moved out mostly and she was like, Oh, it's yeah. a, it's a freaking mess in there. Just like whatever, just ignore that. Cause they were in the process of moving and I walked in and I was just like you can never come to my house again because this is Shut not a mess. Up. Like literally, everything was nice in boxes, ready to be moved. I, I'm just like, oh I just my don't gosh. get it. Oh god, that is just so funny. Jay with his shit so all over funny. the room. Look this. <laughs> Bath and Body Works folded towels. Like, look at this shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfectly like manicured, folded <laughs> pile of shirts. <laughs> kind of shit everywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so funny. Um, something that I forgot to say in my part of the catch up is I'm thinking about cutting my hair. I saw and, that. Like, I'm, listen, I'm being a little bit reckless, but I'm kind of in a position where I'm like, I just need to do it or else I will chicken out because this has happened so many times. Are you checking your messages though? Because I'm going to call you out right now for not checking your DMs because I did DM you a link. <laughs> <laughs> She's about where to donate my hair, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, 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 yes. Um, I have not checked my DMs <laughs> lately. So I, I will look at that. Um, I sent you I pictures. You. There was like, I sent you pictures. You sent of me, me pictures of Mia because Mia donated her hair to Locks of Love. Like, oh man, how old was she? This is probably like eight years ago. She just wanted to cut all of her yeah. hair off, and she did. Like, I let her make this decision at five, and she chopped it. It was down oh past gosh. her butt. And she was just like, no, because she was just, she hated how Wait. I had to like <gasps> brush it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Look at her. She's so cute. <laughs> Look at all that hair. Wait, now I have to send it to Adam because he's looking yeah, at me I like, can't Wait. see it. Um, but yeah, so she, oh, did I delete those? Oh, I probably did. I'll send oh them to you later, gosh, Adam. She's so precious. Okay. But yeah, so she, it had to be a certain length, though. The stylist said it had to be like a certain ten length inches, in order I to think be, it is. is it 10 inches? Okay. I wasn't yeah. sure. Like certain organizations will take 10 inches, but they prefer like closer to 12 to 14. Okay. So I was like, oh, I'm comfortable with doing 10 inches. Like that's like just underneath my boob or like at my boob or something. Mm-hmm. And I, sorry, I don't know if that's vulgar to some people. It's just a marker on my body. It doesn't mean (laughs) anything. But, like, my hair has not been above my boobs since, like, middle school. So I've always been able to cover, you know, like, the mermaid thing. I've always been able to do that, like, since middle school. Um, And so I'm kind of scared. But I do want to cut it pretty short. Like, maybe your length, Adam. Wow. Like, to your shoulders, right? Yeah. Yeah, mine is to my shoulders. Yeah, sorry to clarify for everybody. Adam is growing his hair out. So I don't know. Like, I kind of... It would be easier to play each other, like, in cosplay, Adam. So I think that would make our lives a lot easier. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Just really on this cosplay kick. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, no, but really, like, speaking of cosplay, I was like, Daniel... Would you judge me if I ordered elf ears? And he's like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Honestly, some of the elf ears look really cool. Like, and you can't even tell. I've been wanting to order elf ears ever since, like, I, somebody told me that I looked like Arwen from Lord of the Rings. And I was like, I'm going to order elf ears then. Um, anyway. And he was like, where would you wear them? I was like, I don't know, like, around. And he's like, no. (laughs) Like around the bedroom? I don't know. <laughs> My like grocery precious. shopping. You're gonna cut he's gonna come home from work one day and you're gonna have hair like cut shoulder length with elf ears on and he's gonna oh be gosh. like, wait. 
What happened? Who is this? I'm never I mean, going to I work said again. for better or worse, but I didn't expect this. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect, like, cosplay, girl. <laughs> there's nothing, obviously, there's nothing wrong with cosplaying. I think it's cool as shit. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Very cool. I would love to do it. I want to go to the Ren Fair. You know, I'm I'm into these things now. But <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm thinking of cutting my hair. Look, they have appointments today still Ooh. Um, until 8 p.m. Like, should I just do it today? Oh, my gosh. I feel like, go. Here's the thing. I feel like if I, did, uh, did if Nic- I wait to do it until tomorrow. Did Nicole, did like, you just ugh. say no? I said go. Oh, go, yeah, go. Book it. Well, I think what you need to focus on, though, and I think maybe that'll help you, is that... You're going to be donating your hair, which is amazing hair, like never dyed, Mm -hmm. beautiful, to someone who can have a wig, you know? So just like focus on that. Like just be like, okay, this is going for a good cause and not just like, oh my gosh, I've never done, had short hair before, but like you're doing something good with it, you know? Plus I feel like your hair, (laughs) your hair seems to grow pretty quickly. Yeah, it does. Like your bangs grew out in like yeah. no time. Yeah. And what the hell? <laughs> I was annoyed because I was like, I'm still like, mine don't fit back in a ponytail. And you're like, oh, mine's fine. And I was just like, what the <laughs> hell? But also you kind of have a face structure that could, would go with any hairstyle, which I'm extremely mm. envious of because I've always wanted to like cut my hair short, but my face is pretty like round and you know the triple chin thing but like i don't know like i feel like you would look really cute with short hair especially now that your bangs are growing out like it would just look real yeah. cute yeah you're right and honestly like it does look my bangs did grow really fast they're like to my cheekbones ish mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. well maybe even to my my jaw but like it looks so weird having them be like this like chunk of hair and then the rest of my hair length yeah. like it just looks weird and I have to style them or like do something with them because they don't really fit in with the rest of my hair so I think that's also motivating me but Adam you're so right like it's literally not about me I'm like doing like premature organ donation like I'm an organ donor (laughs) I'm willing to give my body up yeah (laughs) you know like yeah same we'll give it to to donation (laughs) not to anybody (laughs) no I know I know what you meant (laughs) meant (laughs) I just said same before you clarified. <laughs> but I, I, like same. Anybody who same, wants me, please. The same as you. I'm donating my body to the cause. Um, I wasn't yeah. calling you okay. out with that, though. I just want to make that clear. Like, I was just saying, like, no, that's no. if you focus on that, maybe it'll be easier for you to just, like, follow through with it. You no, know, I didn't think I did not take offense to that. That that was a nice perspective shift because that's why I wanted to do it in the first place. And then I was like, oh, shoot, but I've never had short hair like. In a, since I was like 10 so yeah yeah it is it is and it'll grow back my hair grows like an inch every month probably I was thinking because like I got it cut probably six inches off six months ago and it's already back so I'm like I think I'll be fine yeah, yeah. and it kind of feels like I'm hoarding this thing like if I have the ability to like share my hair I don't need to hoard it for my own vanity you know so I don't know just just some little convicting Ooh, thoughts about vanity. I'm excited vanity. about this. If you cut it today, you better do that tap to cut story on Instagram. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good idea. I'm definitely going to be exploiting this for content, like 1,000%. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> tap to cut. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I think every time I see someone with really long hair get their hair cut short, I'm like, oh, it looks so good. Like, it makes them look better. <laughs> but... I've just been always scared to do it. Um, so, are we anyway. going to get layers? Oh, gosh, I can't wait. <clears throat> <laughs> I'll probably do layers because my hair, it, well, it was wavy. I don't know what it is anymore. I mean, it, it does still get wave in it, but not as strong. But, like, it was wavy, so if I didn't get layers, I would look like a poof. So, mm-hmm. like a, yeah. a cotton ball. So I need to get layers to, like, thin it out. Mm-hmm. But imagine how healthy it's going to be. Yeah. Putting that much off. Yeah. Oof. Like and not a much, single dead end inside. How much less time it's going to take to shower, to dry, all Ooh, of that. Ooh, you'll be in and out. You're how already much? in and out of the shower. Like impressively in and out of the shower. <laughs> I can imagine yeah. short hair Becca in and out of the shower. But also, you know what else I was thinking? You're I also don't see you with your hair up very often like sometimes you get the messy bun happening but a lot of the times your hair is down and I feel like every time I've cut my hair in the past short because I've had short hair I always instantly regret it because it's hard for me to like 
put my hair up put it up but yeah. you, like you if your hair is going to be that short you won't really have to put it up because like your neck will be yep. free <gasps> and you can do space buns Ooh. <gasps> I can do cute little space buns instead of like cinnamon rolls yeah. on top of my head. Princess oh Leia rolls. <laughs> Princess, literally Princess Leia rolls. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'll try all like the cute little hairstyles that I couldn't do because I had like massive globs of hair. It'll be good. But okay, I'm gonna do it. What time should I go? <laughs> well, it <laughs> is. We'll probably be done at like. What time? I'm gonna leave. Sorry, guys. I can't <laughs> okay. today. Bye. We'll see you next week. We're canceling the pod. <laughs> we've been okay, we've been well, updating for forty minutes. So if this oh, is shit. if this is a good thirty minute episode now, I say leave at like four o'clock, and then you could hey you could have content for today. Today okay. Well, then the latest appointment they have in the afternoon is three forty five. Oh shit. Okay, well, let's get this so. going. So, downsizing our plant collections. <laughs> <laughs> book it. Yeah, book it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to book 345. That gives us another hour. Oh, That's yeah. perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're fine with an hour. Oh, shit, I'm really doing this. <gasps> I'm yeah. really doing... Oh, wait, I'm hold so on, proud I just went away. Oh, no. They- oh, dang it. No, I just refreshed it for no reason. <laughs> okay, sorry. You guys just get started. Get Get it started here. All right. <laughs> do you want me to go yeah well yeah like w- w- the topic we want to tackle today is just downsizing your plant collection which people can downsize for many reasons um i feel like in i think i'm in this boat right now is that like when i started collecting plants and falling in love with plants it was just like i need them all you know pokemon mm-hmm. gotta collect them all uh <laughs> and then there's a point where that just turns this hobby that was for me, a therapy and, and something that I just enjoyed doing, it turned it from being a hobby and something enjoyable to being like this task that almost felt overwhelming. And yeah, more so whenever you get pests, which eventually we're all going to get pests. If you haven't yeah. had them yet, they're coming. Like, <laughs> it just happens. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when you have to treat your plants and all of your plants for pests, I think that's when you realize like how overwhelming your collection might be. And maybe that's a good, a good reason to downsize. Yeah. Cause I'm feeling that right now. Are you, are you still dealing yes. with, um, thrip? Those, no, it's just those stupid mites. And I don't even really? know. I'm going to call them spider mites, mm. but before They're vacation, I was literally doused everything in the rubbing alcohol water spray and then captain Jack's and, I think mm-hmm. I got a little bit high from that rubbing alcohol because, like, oh, you know, a yes. hundred plus plants, and I'm spraying them all down in my shower. So then I'm just like in this, air, and every time we like we would come in from outside, Steve was like, "Whew, it's strong." I mean, the whole house smelled like alcohol. <laughs> oh, jeez, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. You kind of got to be yeah. careful with that, especially like like you said, like in the shower, the humidity's up too in there, and it's like, <laughs> yeah can't be too careful when i got spider mites for the first time i was like dousing my plants in like alcohol and i gave myself a really bad headache actually and i felt sick for like a couple days Mm. be careful and i started wearing gloves because like i noticed my skin was really getting dry because obviously Mm. the alcohol yeah but gloves are good to wear in general because skin is your biggest organ so if you're spraying chemicals you should have gloves on because that'll go into your bloodstream True, true. No glove, no love. <laughs> Your face looked like you instantly regretted saying that as soon as yeah, she like, said In the that. middle of it, she was just like, why am I saying this? <laughs> <laughs> My mouth just started moving. I don't know, man. Oh. Sorry. But I guess when you get pests, that kind of really separates that emotional attachment that you have to some plants. And it just makes them like, well, I'm yeah. going to eat this one because I ain't dealing with this. Yeet. <laughs> So maybe get some pests, and that'll help you downsize if you've been... Yeah. <laughs> get some pests. <laughs> that pest, spider mites significantly decrease my syngonium collection. Like, I think I have two. <laughs> I have one remaining syngonium from that original syngonium video, I think. Because, like, whoa, they got mm-hmm. rocked. Like, yeah. it was bad. Yeah. yeah. I feel like yeah, spider that's mites... Way to downsize. I feel like spider mites are, like whatever mites you have adam <laughs> some type of hybrid um i feel like that is an a pest that will 
like really put you through the ringer because they I don't know like just from seeing you both deal with them I've like they spread everywhere and they can easily get it's like you have to quarantine those plants that get it because they can literally get over your entire collection and if you have all your plants on shelves like we do for the most part like our collection is kind of together mm-hmm. oh like you can knock out a whole collection with those things yeah yeah it's yeah. been a pain yeah Ugh. and yeah, treating easily. weekly like treating weekly and having to like move around a hundred plus plants and like treat each one of them it's just like i don't know i was i was kind of at wit's end before vacation because i feel crappy that they all have pests and i'm trying to like eradicate them but i was also trying to like take care of everyone before i left for vacation and it was just very stressful mm-hmm. yeah wait you had one of your plans like shrivel up and just disintegrate oh yeah. my gosh. what happened are you ready to talk about that yet? I am so mad about it. Okay, I'm taking heart in that I took a cutting of that before I left and propagated Oof. it. So oh, I have thank God. a one leaf propagation, but that plant was so big. It was a Hoya undulata, and it had been, I nothing had changed. Literally nothing in the care had changed other than Steve, which unbeknownst to me, but you know, <laughs> it was a good decision. He didn't have the air turn on when we were gone. Okay. So oh. our house, he said, oh, no. he said the highest it got was 86 inside. And I was like, well, 86 isn't too bad, but maybe that Hoya just could not hang. But literally it was no signs of anything before we left. And I, it was one of the last plants I posted on my Instagram before vacation. And it's huge and beautiful. Literally come home and the whole thing is wilted, yellow, molded. It was just bad. Like gave yeah. up on life. Every single leaf. That, the stem's mushy. And I was just like, what the hell? So I don't know if it could have been the alcohol mixture that I was spraying, the Captain Jack's, like a mixture of all of that and the house being 85 degrees. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, my sad gosh. Day. It was a sad But I sad bet day. some of your plants flourished from that decision that Steve made. Yeah. I mean, you know, honestly, my plants did really well in the U-Haul moving here, and it was kind of in the 80s there. So I was like, maybe <laughs> yeah. this was the boost. Yeah. And maybe mm. it killed some of those spider mites. Who knows? Hoping. But yeah. Yeah, yeah I, th- I kind of feel that. I feel the whole being forced into downsizing because you get a pest because that's kind of where I'm at with downsizing my collection. I feel like I was forced into it, but for good reason. Like, I feel good about it because before I moved, you know, I took everything, all my shelves apart. I checked all my plants before I moved and I treated every plant because I had mealies everywhere. And now I'm down to like maybe three or four plants that I'm still treating mealies on when it was a lot more before. So I feel like mm. one, I lost a few plants from it. Like I, there was a couple times where I was just like, when you see a cluster of mealy bugs <laughs> on, on a stem and the plant is so small to begin with, that shit, it's, it's getting tossed. Like, I don't care. Like if it doesn't hold a significant value to me, I'm throwing it out. I'm not dealing with it. I'm not chopping it. I'm not, I'm not treating it. Like I'm just done. And I, I did that with a few plants. Um, but then when I, when I moved, I also lost a couple more. So I feel like, I don't know, like my shelves are kind of bare, a lot more bare than they were any other year that I started collecting plants, mainly because I have half of my collection outside <laughs> because my cactus are outside, but I'm looking at yeah. my plant shelves cause I just filmed a house plant tour today And I'm like, this looks really pretty. Like it's, there's enough plants here for me to be happy. And I'm kind of scaring myself by saying that because I'm like, oh, in the fall, I have to bring all these plants in and I love my cactus, but I'm also loving the simplicity of my plant shelves right now. So I don't know, (laughs) I might be downsizing a little more come fall. Who knows? We'll see. But yeah, so I don't know. I I also feel like I've been more in the spirit since we moved to send plants to people. Like I have, I've Mm -hmm. taken some cuttings of some plants. I did some giveaways before we moved and I finally sent them out now (laughs) just because it was still cold when I moved. But I forgot how good of a feeling that that is like to ship people plants and then to have them open plant mail and And be so excited. Yeah. Yeah, so like that's another way to downsize. If you're looking to get rid of some plants, there's always somebody out there that probably wants it, you know? Yeah. I would say the only time that I don't really like actively try to give a plant to someone else is when I'm dealing with pests. Like if a plant has pests Mm -hmm. and I'm just like over it, 
instead of being like, okay, well, I can treat it and give it to someone else. I'm just, like, tossing it away. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. I find that, like, when you said your shelves are bare, like, I'm feeling like all of mine are overpacked now because it's no surprise that I love Hoya. And I got mm-hmm. a bunch of Hoya as two-leaf cuttings, you know, years ago that are now these full-ass plants. Yeah. And so... I, I, I'm reminded, I saw this, like, meme going around Instagram a while, like, a month ago, and it was, it was like, is somebody going to tell all these Hoya lovers who are collecting, th- like, hundreds of Hoyas, like, that in a, five years, like, they're not going to have any space at all? And it's so true, because, like, yeah. all of mine were so beautiful on the shelf, because they were just, like, two-leaf cuttings. Well, thankfully, uh, yeah. they're all getting a lot bigger, and I'm happy about that, but now, like a lot of them can't even fit on the shelves and so I'm just like well where am I going to put all this stuff now like where do I move yeah. this that's true that's how some of yeah. mine are too I was talking to Jeff uh, the owner of Vintage Hill mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was saying he's like I feel bad for all these like people who are collecting all these plants that are small like they're going to grow and then you're not going to have any room for yourself like you got to figure something out like because yeah. <laughs> these things are going to get huge these plants get huge in nature and like god willing they'll get huge in your house too but i feel like people normally kill their plants before they get too big <laughs> yeah yeah like the the population control is like <laughs> the population is controlled by like our human um inability to care for things sometimes or just like our mistakes and stuff so it's like uh. and the but, fact that like our living conditions aren't built for that like i can't yeah. keep a big ass 10 feet bird of paradise in my house you know that shit died when it was like five little lonely (laughs) small leaves yeah like if you are lucky enough to have a plant like outgrow your house like that's a that's pretty cool actually it's really (laughs) cool yeah to have it get to that point um like your adansonii tree (laughs) like my adansonii tree yeah i hope that my next house can hold it i hope that i can transport it but i don't know like i don't know if i'll be able to i might have to sell it before i move you know right i mean i i bring up moving like way too often but it's not gonna happen for a couple years so yeah it's not on the docket yet (laughs) yeah it's not on the docket i'm just being realistic that this is not my forever home right but yeah, like I'm probably gonna have to figure something out with that plant before whatever, but yeah. Um a way that my collection has been downsized a lot is uh plant swaps. Mm-hmm. I actually just I actually just went to a plant swap and I just um I skitter, scurried off to the bathroom, hee <laughs> hee. But I heard you guys talking about like sending plants to people and you know, downsizing that way. Mm-hmm. Plant swaps are another great way to do so. I mean, I went to a plant swap this last week like two weekends ago I guess now and I was like packing up my stuff and I'm looking around and I'm like hmm well I don't really want to get rid of a lot of stuff so I didn't I only brought like six things which I usually bring a lot more than that and then I got home and I was like you know what that felt really good to like get rid of things yeah and I was looking around I was like there's so many other things that I would bring to the next plant swap so it's just nice going to those things regularly because you Mm -hmm. get in the habit of like you know switching out plants and whatever else um it keeps it exciting the great way yeah it it does keep it exciting and like there's also something so sweet about like just contentment in having like a semi-small collection like there's a few people i follow on instagram who have like 50 plants and their in their Instagram it's not all about the Instagram but you know but their page is just as cool as anyone else's who has like a 300 plant collection for sure um and I think there's also something to be said about like overconsumption too yeah and like recognizing that and then doing things to like amend that and like work on not over consuming plants just just because you can I, I see it all too often you know with anything collecting Mm -hmm. anything it's so easy to just be like oh i want that one and that one and that one and that one but i already have this one but this one's better i do it too yeah i think we all do yeah like when you catch yourself in those like moments of overconsumption downsizing is really a good thing a healthy thing i think though too like when you said the the folks who have just like a set of like 30 some plants it honestly might lead you to care for your plants better and see more growth instead of 
trying to spread out your resources for 100 plus, 200 plus plants, if you focus on 30, chances mm-hmm. are they're going to be much happier than they would have been when they were in a crowd of 100 or 200. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I yeah. feel like, Cause like... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. Well, no. I was... <laughs> You're like stonewalling me. I just see you shaking your head. You're like, no, I'm not. Well, I was just gonna say, like, the moment that you like that should be like a red flag and and letting you know that maybe you should downsize is if you just don't find joy in it anymore. Like, if you know, we kind of said it at the top of talking about this topic, but if it becomes this like overwhelming task and it's no longer the thing that pulls you off of the couch in your depression spells Mm -hmm. to like focus on something else and it's the thing that you're putting off during your depression cells and maybe for your own health and self-care you should think about downsizing yeah Mm -hmm. because like you know it shouldn't be a task that you dread i mean dealing with pests definitely a task you dread but like just like maintaining your house plans like they're there to bring you joy and and Mm -hmm. i don't know it's just never yeah. fun to like put things off because you're dreading them, you know. And I don't want that yeah. to happen with plants. No, for sure. That kind of scares me to think that that could happen, you know. But also, you can like start a little business if you're feeling if you're feeling like it by downsizing. Because yeah. Adam, you've taken numerous cuttings from your Hoya and have yeah. sold them like you know in auction or whatever like I don't really know a lot about that which we still need to talk about but yes (laughs) I think that it's that that's a really cool thing too you know selling your plants downsizing that way yeah I mean you know we had that Hoya talk and like people being like these plants are going to get huge like there's Mm -hmm. been quite a few of my Hoya that have gotten huge that I cut all the way down and restarted with the two leaf cutting which is how I originally grew the plant out Mm -hmm. and propagated the rest of them and put them in a purge just because the two leaf cutting is more manageable and it's kind of just fun to start over like yeah Mm. not for every single plant but sometimes it's just like oh can i get this to grow this big again you know it's just fun to being like okay well i'm gonna cut this back down to a two leaf thing and we're gonna start from the beginning one more time and so yeah Yeah. like donating hair yeah (laughs) (laughs) did you get that appointment yes Ooh, yay. yay i'm scared but but yeah i actually i just took a cutting of my elbow is the first time ever and i'm sending it to well i don't know if it'll be rooted by the time this episode comes out i think i've got like another month before this episode comes out probably right yeah yeah okay i'm sending it to taylor plant dust woman love her so and much <laughs> i know me too she's the best and it's like a two leaf cutting off of my elbow it only has a single node though like I kind of regret that I don't know I regret that kind of I wish that I gave her at least two nodes just in case something goes wrong but hey hey, hey. and that plant it is so resilient I'm sure it'll be fine yeah I'm gonna root it for the next couple of weeks and see what happens Mm -hmm. um just to like have less pressure on it while it's being delivered and like less pressure on her but honestly if she kills it, she kills it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not the end of the world. If I kill yeah. it, I kill it, you know? I right. mean, I think that, especially with, like, the more... Okay, yeah. Sending plants, taking cuttings of your plants. For me, I am a person who is reluctant to chop and prop, actually. And you both are very keen to chop and prop. Especially Adam. Yeah. I'm very reluctant to chop and prop. Because I just want to see my plants get really big. And mm-hmm. I... But there's certain plants that I'm kind of hoarding away because I'm like, I want this for me. But then again, I have to remind myself. It's the back, back to the hair. <laughs> I have to remind myself that, like, this will serve somebody else, you know. Like, um, people have been, like, so generous in giving me plants. So yeah. it's literally the least I can do to, like, give somebody else a cutting of one of my really special plants. Um, just, so, you know, it's it's humbling. It's It's good. It it's is good it's to see good their thing. beautiful faces when they open the package. And <laughs> I would, I will say though that I, I am keen to chop and prop, but a lot of mine are hoya, which are yeah. They can get big, but the leaves don't change as they mature. Well, not all the time, you know. 
Whereas, like, yeah. your philodendrons and anthuriums and all of that, like, you do want to see those yeah. get big. And you want to have this yeah. huge, beautiful plant. And it is hard to chop those because then sometimes you're like, well, where's the new shoot going to shoot off at, you know? Mm-hmm. And you're yeah. just like, uh, with Hoya, I mean, they, I feel like they're always pretty like, okay, well, we're going to grow out of this next node and it's not going to be this weird thing. I don't mm-hmm. know. But yeah. Yeah. That's true. That is very true. And I don't have a big Hoya collection. Like, yeah. I just, yeah, I'm not like super big on Hoyas. I used to be. That's another thing we could talk about in this episode is like plant types that you were really keen on. And then all of a sudden you're like, eh, just not really into it. Um, there's this person I follow on Instagram. I think, I think their Instagram name is Rooted in Plants. Okay. Maggie? I think I know that. That sounds very familiar. Yeah. So she was talking about how she's downsized. Like, she'll, she'll go by genus. So she'll look at all of her Hoyas and be like, I only want to have 10 Hoyas. I only want to have 10 philodendron or whatever else. You know, she looks at it based on that. And I think that's really cool, too. Um, but like, I don't, I think I have like four Hoyas in my entire collection and I used to have probably, okay, that, uh, no, 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 no. I have more than four. That's a lie. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> you do have more than four. But I, we know what you're I, saying. I, yeah. You definitely have a lot more. Maybe I have like 10. But yeah, like there's just like, there was a point in my life where I was like super into Hoya. Mm-hmm. And now some of my Hoyas, like I could probably let go of in my life wouldn't really change, you know, and like switch it out for a pothos and like I don't feel like my life would change you know what I mean Mm -hmm. yeah so I think recognizing that is important too like if it's just not changing your life by being around like I don't know maybe you don't need it if you're wanting to downsize but you know what I feel too oh go ahead sorry oh sorry I was gonna say my Hoya Obavada and my Hoya Pibicalix like they're neither here nor there for me I'm gonna keep them but you know like if I was to downsize I'd probably go for those you know Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. But okay, go ahead, Nicole. You know, something else I think of, and this is like, I guess, as creators, as like YouTube plant creators, that sometimes we can feel guilty about losing interest of a certain plant that maybe we're known to have. Like, Adam, if tomorrow you woke up and you said, I'm getting rid of all of my Hoya, people will be like, oh mm-hmm. my God, he's gone mad. Admit him, you know? <laughs> but, or like with me, like the other day I was looking at my cactus outside and I was like, you know, I don't know. Like, I love cactus, but maybe it has something to do with like me not visiting Arizona as much or like not finding mm-hmm. any cactus out here at some of the nurseries I've been to recently. Like their selection is just crap. And I'm just like, yeah, Yeah. I don't have any interest in getting any more. And then I think about that and I'm like, oh, but people know, like, I love cactus and like, that's a big part of my collection. And I think about like, well, what what would it look like if I got rid of all my cactus, you know? So I think that we Mm -hmm. kind of hold ourselves to this standard that maybe we shouldn't as creators and like allow ourselves to change up interests, you know, like with LECA Mm -hmm. and soil, like I'm starting to convert some of my plants back from soil back to or from leka back to soil and i'm waiting for the backlash like i'm just like oh but you Mm. swore by leka but i still do but it's like you know when your plants get to a certain anyway you know what i'm saying yeah 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 so that's something else that we should probably not be too hard on ourselves for in that's like a nice life lesson too like you know how i was listening to this podcast where they talk about like Uh, you know how you like put these identities on yourself like oh I don't like mushrooms so Mm -hmm. then everybody around you knows you don't like mushrooms so you'll they'll never offer you mushrooms they'll never give you anything with mushrooms in it or you know I don't I don't like cactus so like you never even look in the cactus section you just kind of like put these limitations on yourself like I'm not a morning person and it's like so limiting Mm because like that's just something that we're saying about ourselves but like that could change and that's okay yeah. Right. For sure. Well, yeah, and it just goes with seasons, you know, like mm-hmm. as when I, like when we all started, we were all just like buying every plant that we could see at the big box stores or wherever we were at. And now I go in and I'm like I'm not interested in any of these because as I've taken care of plants, I've realized the ones that I care about, the one the species that I like more, the ones that work well with my plant parenting, the ones that work well with the environment. So we just learn and grow and like that should be okay so like if you have plants now that you're just like not into just Mm -hmm. get get rid of them 
you know, yeah. mm-hmm. don't feel bad. It's important. It's important to yep. normalize it too, because I feel like, again, as creators, this doesn't to apply to everyone, but as creators, people watching you probably have a lot of these same feelings. And, you know, if someone sees this glorious 300 plus plant collection and then they look at theirs and they think like, oh, you know, I'm, you know, mine's, I felt like that for a long time because I never really had quote unquote rare plant. Like I wouldn't have a tie or an elbow or a syngonium elbow if it weren't for you, Rachel from Heart Shape Leaves, you know, like other people in my life mm-hmm. who gifted me those plants. And then, you know, I don't yeah, know. I feel like yeah. some people just look at that like, like having a smaller collection isn't the in thing and that's just not the case you know yeah yeah exactly I, it, and it's it goes back to the overconsumption thing like oh you have to have a jungle in order to if you like plants it means you need to have a jungle mm-hmm. um which no not at all yeah yeah not at all i the whole like plant count thing i've been realizing like certain parts of the plant community and like plant community culture kind of bother me and one of those things is like plant count and um what's the other what's the other one plant count and ah oh the phrase i'm addicted to plants or yeah. saying something like that like plant addict etc yeah um that bothers me like, a lot yeah, I think about it a lot, and I've thought about making a video, like, several times about the plant addict thing, but I really think it could be summed up in, like, a sentence. Like, it's just, like, glamorizing addiction, which is a really sad thing. Yeah. I think we've talked about this on the pod before, mm-hmm. but, like, addiction is not, like, this, like, cutesy little thing. Like, it's really sad, and it, like, rips people apart. So I think it's kind of weird to be like, hee-hee, I'm addicted to plants. Like, I'm a plant addict, and it's just, like, not... I don't know. Yeah, that yeah. term is definitely thrown around a lot, and it has been for a long time. Yeah. yeah. If you've ever had anyone close to you or family members who have suffered from a ad- substance addiction, like, mm-hmm. when that's so flippantly thrown around, it's like, ooh, I like, Oof. you know, I like Disney, so I'm a Disney addict. It's just like, okay, well, you know, like, that, it's just, it's there's so many layers to that. Just stop using that phrase. Like, you shouldn't yeah. be using that phrase. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it it's it's hard because in some, some ways people, I'm like, yeah, sorry. I was gonna say like in some ways I'm like, yeah, you are addicted. Like that's not good. Like yeah. I see it as like, ooh, ooh. it's not good though. <laughs> I see some people who sorry. have like that username, and if you're one of those people, like I'm not I'm not calling anyone out, but I just feel like, oh no, like I want you to change, like I want you to have a different username than like having <laughs> addict in your name, like you know. Yeah. But yeah. that's not for me to say. That's for just I don't know. Yeah. 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 It, I don't know. And the, the plant count thing, I think just kind of is a reverberation of like comparing and like who's is bigger, like, you know, comparing sticks, like, I don't know. It just feels contrived almost. And not that there's anything wrong with counting your plants again. Like there's nothing wrong with knowing how many plants you have, but it's yeah. like, oh, I have 300. How many do you have? Oh, you only have 100. That's weird. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think when people take it to the point where they're like comparing their plant count to somebody else's and like using it as a measure of like your worth in the plant community or as a plant collector, plant enthusiast or whatever, I think it can turn out pretty bad. And you know what? When a house is completely overstuffed with plants, unless you're really good with design, it probably looks really bad. Yeah, unless you're Amanda. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> it probably Yeah, unless looks you're Amanda. Like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, unless you're like really good with design, like Amanda Hilton Carter's house looks amazing. Oh, he has so gosh. many plants, but so like nice. his house is like beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Like it looks so tasteful, even though there's like a thousand plants in there. Yeah. I don't know. It's a really intricate line to toe. You know. Do you so, guys? Do you yeah. guys feel like when we started because we we all did YouTube that you had to like order a bunch of plants to like have content like for unboxings and stuff because i went oh i went like i didn't go hard on unboxings but at first it was like okay people really like these and i really like these i liked consuming Mm -hmm. i liked watching people unboxings but there was a point where i was just like i can't do this anymore and i don't think that Mm -hmm. this is good to continue to do not that i'm going to shade anyone for doing unboxings but 
No, I yeah. felt like I was sometimes buying plants just to do an unboxing. Just for a video. I mean, I loved yeah. them, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've yeah. had this conversation with Jay, actually, because there's been a couple of times where he was like, do you think you would have done that video? Or do you think you would have gotten that if you didn't, like, want to do the video? And it, like, yeah, like, I definitely thought when I was ordering a plant or when I was getting a plant at the store, like, I could turn this into a video. But I also think, like you said, like, you love doing it. But I think that, I don't know, I think that with all of us and with a lot of people, you reach a certain point where you're like, okay, you know, I unbox like 10 plants in the past month and a half, like, let me slow down or, or you're realizing that you are content with what you have. Um, yeah. So I would say for sure I have, I've, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten maybe quite a few plants if I didn't have a YouTube channel that yeah. I did. Yeah. Because I have given away yeah. quite a, quite a bit and I have, you know, fallen out of love with plants pretty quickly after I bought them, honestly. And then just like they died or I tossed them. So I know like, that probably wouldn't have happened mm-hmm. if I didn't have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, it's hard to strike a balance between content that does well and content that you like. Like, I think in every genre of YouTube and content creation, there are certain types of videos that do well, and it's usually videos where you're consuming something, you're buying something. Um, I think people just like watching others spend money because we like spending money as a as humans right it's true so I feel like watching other people spend money can maybe like satiate our need to spend money and that's why those videos are so popular because every time I do when I get lots of comments it's like well not lots but I get a few that are like oh man like this just like curbed my need to buy plants like thanks you know what I mean it like because you I wonder what that is psychologically actually because maybe we get the same amount of like serotonin boost when we watch other people open things that we want you know how i I get i get like that when i watch people do like grocery hauls is that weird (laughs) like a trader joe's haul or like i don't know aldi i'm like okay i have to get my ass to trader joe's like that's literally how my brain works i like super enjoy watching what other people buy at the grocery store and i hate (laughs) grocery shopping so it's really strange i hate it so much oh my goodness (laughs) i hate grocery shopping I don't know but yeah those videos always perform so well and like I I I have before been like all right we need something because my channel is kind of dying right now so like let's do an unboxing and you know like I don't buy a lot of plants at once and I'm not doing it just for the YouTube you know know what I mean but I'll be like okay I'm gonna film an unboxing right like but that's such a hard thing because we can't keep consuming 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 Mm -hmm. um because then you would have a lot of plant turnover and then people want to see plants a year later they want to see plants three years later they're wondering hey what happened to this plant right you know it was gone i never saw it again after you unboxed it like what happened like people pick up on these things yeah they do so which is kind of sad sometimes because i'm like don't bring it up (laughs) i was sad about that okay (laughs) too soon (laughs) yeah too soon uh, I did want to yeah. make I did want to say something about when you were talking about how like sometimes we fall out of love with certain types of plants and it made me think of like you know kind of in as humans like going through life we have these moments where people come into our lives and they make a huge impact but then they were meant to teach us some sort of lesson that we learned to have a more fulfilling life later and I'm going to relate that back to the fiddle leaf fig because that was one of the <laughs> one of the first plants that I got because it was the, the popular one mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. while I will never own another fiddle leaf fig again uh, that plant taught me so much about plant care because before that plant I had no idea that house plants wanted to dry all the way through that plant taught me to research that plant taught me to like look up and see different things that could affect plants it, I got the first spider mites like all of these things that plant like gave me information on but now i never want one again you know but it was it's, it served a purpose in life and you know sometimes yeah. your plants will do that too and then you just never want to see them again that's a really that's a really beautiful and sweet point like yeah. they'll teach you something you got to remember those lessons yeah because if not you're just like blowing through plants for no yeah. reason you know <laughs> no what reason. are you learning from them yeah yeah that's a good point 
but mm-hmm. I do I do find it still kind of crazy at this point in like you know we've been in the plant community for a few years now and I feel like the craze started shortly before we got into YouTube you know like the whole yeah. plant craze came back from like the 70s 80s um but still like you don't see a lot of videos on people downsizing their plant collection you don't see a lot of videos on people saying that i'm going to give away half of my my plant collection or you know i'm moving so i'm not going to have plants anymore or whatever the case is maybe not that Mm -hmm. extreme because we love plants and they make us happy but yeah i feel like it is still a lot of unboxing and rare 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 and you know plant shopping and i mean me too like i've I have three videos in my queue of plant shopping. (laughs) Not that I bought a ton, but you know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. I just feel like we really should normalize it a little bit more. Yeah. Especially the plant anti-haul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially being in a time now where we had a whole year to reflect on what's really important and, you know, just being with our plants 24 seven, a lot of us feeling a little overwhelmed anxiety on high you know we we should we should normalize that a little bit more because i'm sure there's a lot of people having these same feelings maybe being overwhelmed which i know we talked about that too on the podcast um before but then Mm -hmm. watching all these videos of like just accumulating more and more and more you know yeah i mean where does it all go my gosh i mean it's not like any of us are living in mansions with like tons of storage closets. Yeah, no shit. And windows, and east-facing windows for everybody. <laughs> you know, like I, you know what? I miss an east-facing window yeah. so much. That's where all my Hoya are. Uh, I know they're I the goat. It. Yeah. Yeah, south windows. I just like they're good. I just don't love them. I think it's a bit much. Like, I don't know. I have all south windows in my downstairs, like yeah. all my plants south. So, which they're all thriving, they're fine. Yeah. It's just I'd prefer an east window, honestly. I liked that much more. Mm-hmm. That'll be on the top of the list, <laughs> my next house. But, like, <laughs> uh, you know what? It's crazy because a lot of people, I've talked about this with you guys specifically, and when you came to my house, you realized why, but like my living room doesn't have plants. And a bunch of people are like almost offended. They're like, why? Why don't you have plants in there? Get a grow light, do something. You have to have plants in every inch of your house. Like, but it's like, no, you don't. No, 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 you don't. You really don't. And it's probably, you know, I don't know. Plants are really awesome, but they don't need to be like your entire life, like your entire personality, your entire everything. Mm -hmm. We're just so much more than that. And it goes back to people being like, this is a plant channel. Why are you talking about Disneyland? It's like, okay, buddy. Okay, like, calm down, sweetie. No, but that's true, though, because I have gotten comments multiple times, actually, when I did tours of my last house which is kind of why i'm a little reluctant to do a full house tour of the new house one for privacy Mm -hmm. reasons um two for people for for the comments of just like oh my god you have all those windows like why isn't there why aren't there plants in in those windows you know and Mm -hmm. it's like not every window has to have a plant in it you know i yeah like i feel like a big part of my plant collection has to do with aesthetic and if i don't like if i feel like something's just kind of cluttered yeah uh, it's not a good feeling for me so like not every single window has to have a a plant in it right i'm just reminded of the one review that's still on our podcast it says why do i care about these people's lives there's not a lot of plant talk (laughs) (laughs) and then they're gonna then they're gonna click on and (laughs) I don't 40 care about minutes them in. as humans. Someone um, also commented, someone commented on a video of mine that made me think of this specific podcast we're recording right now cuz I could see somebody leaving a review saying the the talk really starts 40 minutes in. People Skip do that 40 to me minutes. all the time. Someone and commented a on a stamp, video. I delete it. Yeah. I'm just like screw you. Some people want to hear it. I always delete it. Oh my gosh. Someone but, did that to me but like it was the timestamp was two minutes and 45 seconds like you can't listen to me just give my intro you have to (laughs) you have to call a timestamp after my my intro so i 
Oh my gosh. That, I, th- I thought about it. starting to like do like a catch up at the end of the videos, or even though I don't have a ton of videos out, but being like, okay, like stick, stay around to the end if you want to like know what's going on in my life because people were That's, doing yeah. that. But I was like, screw this. Like they can, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, because someone annoying. someone wrote on mine like the real info starts at five minutes and thirty seconds. You all can thank me for this or something, and I'm just <gasps> like, what the hell? Delete. Oh, rude, rude. Block and delete. No, somebody commented something very similar on my houseplant tour. My intro was a minute and a half. A minute and a half. That's barely enough time for me to say hi, hello. Here's my name. Exactly. And then I was like. Here's where I live and like what my windows are. That's literally all I said. And I was like, thanks so much for being here. If you're not already subscribed, you know, the basic stuff. Somebody commented <laughs> back. No, no. They commented and they were like, how come women never like just get straight to the point? They always have to talk. Blah, blah, blah. Oh they my made it about women. Oh, and my then, gosh. Like my channel's gotten to the point where like my followers will go at those people for me. So I just kind of like let Love them. When that yeah, you're, <laughs> you have, I, you have like, some pit bulls in my there. Life. When that started happening, I was like, wow, these people really are my friends. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, for so long, like, I'd see the hate comment and, like, no one would say anything. And I'd be like, oh, God, I got to handle this myself. Um, <laughs> no, but they, this person commented back and was like, okay, just admit that you hate, that you, that you don't respect women and have the attention span of a fly and move on or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like, just admit that you just that you don't respect women. I was like, hell yeah! Like, why make it about gender? Like, it's, oh it's a YouTube God. intro. <laughs> it's well, that's what that one person set up mine. It was a year ago because it came up my time hop recently. Like, why is the first thing fag tubers always say is subscribe <gasps> to my channel? Yeah. Oh my and God! Die. You know what? What? It, the funny thing is that uh... person. That person had of some videos on their channel of like geese in Boston because they lived in Boston, and Betsy Begonia saw that comment and she went on the search and she, I mean, honestly, oh. love her to death. She was like, "Okay, well, this video showed this work truck. This is where that person works. This was the, oh. this was the date." And like, I sent an email to that company and was like, "I just want to let you know, like, this oh, person." Oh, I remember this. Yeah, and they were like, "He no longer works here." But you know, we're sorry that that happened. He he does, he no longer works for this company. Oh, it wasn't anyway. because of you. Okay. No, it wasn't because of me. But I was just like, I don't know. That that day, I felt like I needed to like do the research and be like, this. You're not gonna get me. Mm-hmm. Most yeah. of the time, I just get upset and ignore it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, there was. I, I. This feels so familiar. Like I talked about this in a podcast or with you guys. But there was this person who kept commenting on my YouTube videos, and they did not like me. It was very obvious. They don't mm-hmm. like me. They just kept commenting really, really rude things. And I was like, why do you even watch my videos? You don't even like me. And I just blocked them from commenting on my channel, and I haven't seen them since. But like, Wait, yeah. was that the one when we were with you, and they made the comment about the crusty stuff, and then you were like, wait, all of their comments on my channel have always been negative. Been bad. Yes. Wait, yeah. crusty what? Wasn't it the Anthuriums or like, is that the oh, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. They were talking they made a rude about comment about your book. They made a rude comment about your book. Like every, yeah. It's, yeah, yes. it's like why, it's like they want to just spread hate. Okay, yeah, you know what's like I, fun? You know what's really fun? All you nasty commenters out there, we can block you from commenting, but you're still able to comment. But and only you think we it's see you don't public, know. And no. you think it's public, but nobody else can see it. <laughs> so think twice before you leave those nasty ass yeah. comments. <laughs> I know. But like literally nobody that everybody who listens to this point in the pod, like they love us. They're like our yeah. best friends. They're like, it we would, would not never. be. <laughs> it would not be these people. The jerks already clicked off 30 minutes in because they're like, they're never going to get to the point. <laughs> I don't care about this bitch's haircut. Let's move on. <laughs> that definitely weeded people out. Like, we were about to get into it, and I was like, oh, yeah, by the way, my haircut. Like, they were going to be like, all right, I'm done. That's it. Final straw. Like, click out. Unsubscribe. Speaking of, we, we should wrap this up so you could go get a yeah. snip snip. Yeah, we're almost an hour 30 in. Uh, you you guys, got I'm this. So scared. I'm so proud of you. If, it's yeah. just hair. 
It's just hair. It's going to grow back. Think of a cancer survivor that's trying to find a really nice wig because most of the ones that people can afford are just really terrible. And then a nice wig is made from your beautiful hair. And they... Oh, your hair is so pretty. They feel beauty again. that's... Honestly, that... Alopecia. Okay, okay. All of the things. Yeah. One of my friends in high school, her mom had cancer and she was trying to like band together a bunch of us to donate our hair and she and I had the exact same color of hair and so we were gonna try and like donate our hair so that the wig could go specifically to her mom but like apparently you can't do that and it's like really really expensive and like I feel like if I knew like the person that my hair was gonna go to I would do this literally all the time you know what I mean but it's just like the the anonymity what is the word anonymity yes anonymity oh, <laughs> English words like I'm like I'm not gonna even um, but like that shouldn't stop me from doing this ever but you know I like I feel like it would make so much more of an impact on us like oh my gosh like I know that my hair is literally being made into a wig and somebody's gonna wear it like yeah I don't know doesn't that just feel or maybe it's that's like, very self-serving and it doesn't actually matter well I, I guess it doesn't I think matter it's self-serving I guess it doesn't matter, like in the grand scheme of things, it's for a good cause. But I will admit that anytime one of those little, like, suffering animal commercials come on, like, donate to this place, I'm like, okay, but I want my dollar to go to that shivering dog in the commercial. Like, where is that dog? Because I want it to go to that dog. And it doesn't, you know, but I get it. Oh, there are, like, some shelters... And like I think some orphanages, and I don't even know if this is ethical, but they'll they'll, they'll like partner you up. There's like some oh. like organization that my family was a part of when I was younger, and we like would write letters to this child in an orphanage like in some other country, and that was sweet. But I don't know if that was just like an like what if it wasn't even real, you know? Like because we would yeah. donate money too. Like what if it wasn't even real? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. No, I know. I, I think I'm sure I know my parents did their due diligence. They're not like. You know, they're smart people, but, you know, you never know. <laughs> no, the Internet's a crazy place. I don't trust anyone in this world. I know. I know. See, okay. <laughs> like, the type <laughs> four in me is, like, I don't trust anything at first glance. Like, I want to. I want to be optimistic. I am, I am like, naturally an optimistic person, but still, like, I remain very suspicious. Yeah. Uh, I don't let it show very often, but I remain suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh okay um also my grandparents were over and we were talking about my temper as a child and i was like i've been an aries from the start like literally i've always been an aries we were talking about how i used to like ram doors and like pound on doors like i would scream <laughs> like uh, anyway uh baby becca <laughs> The more, you know, it's funny because the more I get to know you, the more I can see that side like, ooh, like you're such a nice person. But like when you really get to know you, I'm like, you don't want to piss her off. Like you really don't want (laughs) to piss her off. But then I think about like you're because you're just so much more mature than me. (laughs) Like you would be you would you would reserve yourself and talk it out. I feel before you would flip the fuck out on somebody. But But yeah. still, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to piss you off. No, nah, don't put it past me to flip the fuck out because I definitely can <laughs> and will. But it's usually when I'm alone. I wouldn't want to do that in front of somebody. Like even Daniel, I don't let him see like the full breadth of my anger. Like I'll usually like get in the car and like scream. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Ah! Let it I can't believe he said that. Ah! You know. I need to get on the lawnmower and go mow some things. <laughs> <laughs> Need to start up with a 65 inch deck or a 61 inch deck. Oh god, I don't know. I I mean, as you guys get older, do you feel like wow, I am a Gemini? Do you feel that way? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You're like wow, I'm such a Gemini because you guys are both Gemini's. I'm just so weird. Yeah. <laughs> this is, I'm El Woods and this is Bruiser Woods and we're both <laughs> Gemini vegetarians. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, now I want to watch that. From? Yeah, yeah, Legally Blonde. Oh, Illegally Blonde, okay. yeah. I couldn't think of the hey, title. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, well, my rising sign is a cancer, though. So that's usually, like, what... Oh, how absolutely. You I act. can see that. 
And I don't know what my rising sign is because I don't your follow sun sign like is astrology. like how you present to the world. But I feel like your rising sign is like who you your truly internal, are. Yeah. 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 I, you're definitely like cancer vibes all over you. Yeah, for sure. They're just like emotional beings. Like they just like feel things like and you feel things, which yeah. is amazing. I was so exhausted from this trip, you know, and I feel like when I'm tired, I get extra emotional. And I was like sobbing, watching things on the plane. <laughs> like, and then I came back and the Olympics are on, which is like my favorite thing in the world. I will consume Olympics yeah. for two weeks straight. And when people would win, I was just like crying with them. And I was oh. just like, I'm just so happy. <laughs> But I think it was because I had, like, such a lack of sleep. It made it extra. Yeah. Oh, boy. Super emosh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right, let's, you guys. Let's cut this well, off. Cut it out. Yeah, we could we could talk cut for it. a really long time, because when we don't talk for a couple of weeks, it kind of gets a little hairy. Like, we need to we need to talk more. <laughs> it's a little hairy. I know. I mean, this, we, <laughs> we text, like, all the time, yet still. Yeah. You know? This is just so different so much better but okay um thank you guys very much for listening to today's episode we hope that you enjoyed a little talk about downsizing your plant collection and if you want to share our podcast at all we'd love for you to take a screenshot share it to your stories tell all your friends scream it to the rooftops about how much you love us (laughs) um and uh check out check out our instagram account it's potted together we are also on YouTube. We do YouTube videos together over there, little collabs. And then you can follow all of us individually. My Clean Leaves, Not Dude, K-N-O-T, Not, Not, but K-N-O-T. <laughs> <laughs> and then that wasn't confusing. Me. Yeah, <laughs> and then me, De La Plants. Um, also, it's My Clean Leaves, not My Clean Plants. What are the other iterations of your name? Okay, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. Yeah, I'm procrastinating. There's a lot. My dirty dirty liver. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, you guys. Thank you for watching or for listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye. 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 Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch, full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, from ultra-thin dress watches to solar-powered statement pieces and everything in between, movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT. Dot com.